Hi, Phil Aston here from the Now Spinning Group on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on the World Wide Web at nowspinning.co.uk. Um, on this particular little show, I'm going to be looking at Pace, Ashton Lord, and Malice in Wonderland. I'm going to go through the different formats that are out there because it's just being reissued uh, on a new CD. I'm also going to show you Inside the Tour program from 1977 and talk a little about the DVD that also came out. So, what are my thoughts about this? This is this came out in 1977. I was 18 or so, and as you know, many of you, uh, I'm a bit of a Deep Purple fan, and being that kind of 18 year old kid, Deep Purple self combusted in 1976 or 75 for some people when Tommy Bowling appeared and Blackmore jumped ship. And so everyone with anti great anticipation wanted to know what the ex-members of Deep Purple were going to do next. The other thing to remember of course is that Deep Purple were unique in that nearly every member of the band went on to have a career, a successful career, doing something else. Now there aren't many bands from the from any period in rock history where the bass player and the drummer also went off to have successful careers or they became household names. You know, you think about it from Blackmore, Gillen, Lord, Glover, Pace, Coverdale, Hughes, Bowling, Evans, Steve Moore, whoever that whoever's ever been connected to the band went off and did something. So the fact it was a keyboard player and the drummer in this case who went off to do Malice in Wonderland, everyone wanted to know what was going to happen. Now to set the scene, Richie Blackmore had ladies cards on the table with Richie Blackmore's Rainbow uh, in 75 and basically although he said he was leaving Deep Purple to try something completely different he basically came back doing music that wasn't too far removed from Purple. Ian Gillen was next I think and he came straight out to the, you know, with Child in Time using an ex-Purple song to maybe make sure he got some people to go out and get it but I remember the you know the people I met at the bus stop on the way to various pubs saying Gillen's blowing it because it was jazz rock and to your average purple fan so when this came out which was a glorious um, 40 minutes of rhythm and blues with girly singers and brass sections and soul and, and lots of keyboards people just did not know what to think I remember two songs in particular, um, there was Ghost Story and it could have been uh, I'm Gonna Stop Drinking were, were previewed on the Alan Freeman show before the album came out and I was disappointed. Now this is one of my favourite Deep Purple offshoots that ever came into existence. During this period of 1975 to 77, 78, Ian Pace was on fire. His drumming was so creative and, you know, so imaginative in what he did, um, you know, coming out of Come Taste the Band, all that funk. He was at home on this album and so was John Lord, you know, two, two keyboard players having the time of their life. It's also the album that introduced me to Bernie Marsden and his fantastic um, guitar playing. But this is the thing, for those of you watching this on this group, we, many of us on this group, are probably over the over and past our 20s now. And in a way, this kind of music was aimed at us as we are now. When we were still teenagers in the 70s, punk just around the corner, we wanted rock and we wanted to feel the excitement of music. We did not necessarily have the patience for hearing something new. Now, with some of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s and 70s, we can appreciate this music and know that it was a classic album. But it came out at a time when its audience were very young and they weren't as open-minded as, as we've grown up now, as many of us on this group know, we listen to all sorts of stuff. And there are so many bands that experimented with new sounds in the 70s and 80s perhaps, and they didn't get the, the fair hearing that they now, as their fan base has got older and now goes, you know what, that wasn't bad was it? Um, so this is a great album. So I'm going to go through the different formats and give you some advice on what I would suggest you start with if you want to find out more about this record. So let's have a look. 
So this is the original final um, version of Malice in Wonderland by Pace Ash and Lord from 1977 on the Oyster label Polydor imprint. Um, Oyster was something that all the purple people used when they first left the band. It's a single sleeve although the European version came in a gatefold sleeve um, which I think you can pick up from eBay for not too much of a silly price. Um, and this is the back cover with all the credits on. So you, Ian Pace, Paul Martinez, John Lord, Tony Ashton, uh, recorded at Musicland Studios in Munich, um, as were many of the great albums from that time. The inner sleeve comes with a bit of story from Brian Harrigan from Melody Maker, um, basically trying to get everyone on board that this is the band to to go with and to really give it a listen and to and basically telling people this is not deep purple um you know but um but i'm not i think at the time as i said that fell on deaf ears for me it's got all the lyrics as well and some live shots from the studio when they were pulling the album together so it's on polydor and uh, oyster records and there it is Still in mint condition, my original from 1977. So next up is the program, the official tour program from 1977. I didn't actually go myself um, because, again, I just heard a bit of an album from a sampler and thought, oh, it's not purple. And as I've, as I've said in other videos, at the time in the mid 70s, money was quite scarce really on apprenticeship wages. So. I just couldn't afford it so I just missed out that's my that's my mistake um, so this is the tour program typical of its time um, it says this is the first tour of a band already making a big impression on the music scene and follows the success of their album Malice in Wonderland that's a bit of an exaggeration perhaps but um, it is a great album and here you can see the band um, posing in the woods somewhere with Bernie Marsden wearing a Stars t-shirt very cool at the time because in the UK no one knew who they were and then we've got the ad for the band new album and the story and the build up with, to how they came together and some more live shots a lot of this stuff is taken from the first uh, few gigs they did and um, and also for their time at Music Land Studios uh, when they were recording the album. I'm not sure whether some of this might be taken from the BBC uh, in concert program as well, where they were the first band to actually broadcast in stereo and live at the same time. So lots of stuff you can see here with um, Tony Ashton wearing his country jacket and his flares that, you know, with punk just around the corner, well actually it had arrived. Um, how kind of jaded they may have looked but the music is certainly not jaded you know Ian Pace was at the top of his game on this you know really was fantastic they were supported by a band called Bandit and there they are a bit about them and then again about the other members of Pace Ash and Law which shows you just how what a big operation it was you know they were already a big band but there was two female vocalists and the brass section as well so that is the program from 1977 so we now fast forward quite a way to come to the first time it appeared on CD which is this one um, which is on um, what's the label here Puma and Entry Record well, Repertoire sorry Repertoire Records 1995 um, this cost me at the time from HMV in Sully Hall about 18 19 quid so that's how much CDs were in the mid 90s. You can see why the, the, the music business had made such a bloody mess up of, um, of, of, you know, selling CDs. They were so expensive. But this was great. Um, you know, it was, it had some additional tracks which were recorded live at the Birmingham Odeon, which means that there is a whole concert somewhere buried and the live recordings are superb. This particular version, I'm going to say, is my favourite. Um, it comes with a, a huge booklet with a massive interview with Ian Pace in it. Um, you know, and it's excellent stuff. 
and I don't think some of this has been repeated anywhere else. It was done by Chris Welsh in 1995 with Ian Pace. Um, you know, some great stuff. You get all the lyrics, which is good because you got that with the vinyl album. And obviously you can see the additional tracks there, which are fairly lengthy with Ballad of Mr. Giver, um, which was a, a track from the um, Ashton Lord album, nine and a half minutes long. But what is interesting about this and I've, I haven't found got any clarification, I have asked various people, uh, is how it was remastered or remixed, actually, um, because it's quite interesting. If I can find that in here. It was recorded in Munich in 1976. Um, but what happens on here is, it says, remixed, produced by Tony Ashton, engineered by Tony Mathis of Soul to Soul London. Now that's a new, that is a new credit. And this this particular mix and whether it's got anything to do with soul to soul as in the band soul to soul i don't know but the mix on this sounds so really warm and lots of bass and drums uh, and it it sounds really good so I, I always liked the mix on this reissue this is the repertoire um version from 1995 um with the three live tracks from birmingham and the whole gig was recorded but I just presume they don't think there's enough interest to re to release that actual uh, live concert. Next up was the one that was released on Purple Records, um, which included eight previously unissued studio tracks from the band's long-lost second album, all on one disc. And this is from, um, I can't quite find the date, but I think it was the 2001 this came out. So six years later, this happened. Um, this was Simon Robinson from the Purple, Deep Purple Fan Club, put this together. Um, the second album, if you don't know, was being mastered from a cassette that they found in Tony Ashton's attic from his wife after he'd passed away. Um, so it gives you more background and typical of Simon Robinson's kind of uh, releases. You know, there is literally tons of stuff to read and he's taken some photographs from the from the tour program as well on this um, but I didn't feel that this um, was as good as the repertoire release in 1995 to be honest I just didn't um, so I haven't played that version very often The next one um, that I went for was this. Now this is a, a reissue of the original live um, gig that they did on the BBC's um, Sight and Sound concert from 77, which they were so nervous um, that the gig didn't go that well, to be honest. There were so many things that had gone wrong before they went live that I think it came across in them, in them sounding incredibly nervous. And I think at one stage, one of the members, I think it's Tony Ashton, fell off the stage. Um, but again, this is a reissue with the extra track, Malice in Wonderland is reinstated, which they did, but wasn't broadcast on the night. And this also has some shots from the programme and from the gig. And I think it's, you know, well, I like this and I actually play it. Uh, I, I do play this, um, you know, so I, I do think this is well worth it. Um, and the Malice in Wonderland, which is the track that was missed off, is eight minutes long. So... You know, if you can find this, which it shouldn't be, I don't know, it shouldn't be too difficult, I wouldn't have thought. This came out in 2012. Um, so, you know, but that is, that should be part of the collection, I believe. Now, I can't state how excited I was when this appeared. Um, this is a DVD from um, um, the, the Sight and Sound concert. And this came out, I I think when did this come out? I can't remember now. I think it 2007. Um, this has disappeared now. But what makes this so special is the fact it includes the, the documentary called Lifespan. Now, Lifespan was a short film that was supposed to go out across cinemas to promote the band. And it is absolutely incredible. Um, it's not high quality video, um, but what it includes is, uh, is actually the auditions for the band itself. Um, and, you know, it, it, 
and it's got some really really interesting behind the scenes you can see John Lord turning up in his Rolls Royce and them and what but what really got my interest going on this is that there is a track where you see them jamming in the studio in Munich which is a really great rock track and um, and actually that it's a track that didn't appear on the album or on the second one but some great riffs um, and it's fantastic to see behind the scenes in 1976 really 77 with the band coming together so this is highly recommended if you can find a copy of this uh, maybe it's on YouTube uh, who knows um, but lifespan is a documentary about the band auditioning and recording in Germany on on tour and it features some footage from the tour as well and it's a real shame that they didn't carry on so that brings us to the most up-to-date version which is this one um, this is the new version which has just come out in 2019 and I think this the way aesthetically is the best one so far it's a little mini gatefold sleeve the booklet has not been skimped on at all um, it's got you know all the extra tracks on that you knew from before they've all been tweaked and actually the the new tracks do sound better than the the, the uh, other version that I showed you and this has a lot of photographs that I've not seen before or some are from the program or from the vinyl album but it really is well worth it if you haven't got this then you know I would definitely go for this it's I think it's a such a well put together package um, and it's less than 10 pounds and the fact that they've even put the CD hurrah in its own little sleeve instead of just wedging it in the gatefold which is what they normally do with a couple of pictures that I hadn't seen before um, and they've even got some pictures on the disc itself I think it's really well put together so I hope you liked looking through the different uh, versions of that so as I said this is the one to get which is the new 2019 one um, it's got everything you need it's got the second unreleased album it sounds great yes there is that earlier version with the life tracks on which I personally like but this is the one you can get for less than 10 quid and it's a very well put together package so Pace Ash and Lord, Madison Wonderland brilliant stuff Thank you for watching, as usual, and I'll see you again. Thank you.